All right, so of course it is Sunday. Happy Sunday. Working on glowing telegram again. And uh, let me see. I assume everything was running. Doing some troubleshooting on this uh, yesterday because. Uh, I don't remember if I had talked about it on stream um, all that much. I, I feel like we did we did something on stream around the um, making the uh, yeah yeah. So this is maybe a couple of weeks ago now at this point, making it so that when the uh, videos that are managed with glowing telegram are uploaded to youtube it calls back into the app and updates the database and says hey the video is now stored in youtube at you know with such and such video id and so i had done that i i had tried to do that with um um json path Um, that didn't work. So I ended up using, it turns out the uh, Sturde JSON crate has built-in support for, hello, Pavonis, how's it going? Has support for uh, JSON pointers. It's a little bit different than JSON path. JSON path is like dollar dot whatever. Um, uh, yeah, I think... Uh, I think this is going great. Hope you've uh, been having a good Sunday so far. Um, why is this information out of date? I might just need to, oh, okay, there we go. Just took some time for uh, Rust Analyzer to uh, sort itself out. And I see we have a, we have a, uh, conflict here between a what to request and the, uh, the normal request crate right so um, anyway so I, I was doing some troubleshooting yesterday uh, trying to figure out how to make it do what I wanted to do <clears throat> and I just eventually decided that the uh, the crate I found for JSON path um, was not really um, for me. <laughs> it seemed like there weren't not convenient methods to just look up something at a path and get the value there, right? It always wanted to return some, a little bit more than that. Um, and so I, once I realized that the survey JSON uh, crate had support for JSON pointer and looked at that API, it looked a a lot more straightforward. Um, hence, uh, passing this, right? So, uh, bonus says, I've been trying to start my project. Uh, I have a mind for a long time, but whenever the weekend hits, everything goes poof. Yeah, it's hard to uh, find the motivation, uh, especially if you have other things going on uh, that you gotta, you gotta deal with. There's only so many uh, so many hours in the day, right? Um, for me, it's it's kind of interesting for this project because of the fact that I I have sort of um, committed. And I've been doing pretty good at this, keeping a schedule for my streaming. Kind of, I have these baked in expectations of myself of how I want to do things. And um, it's not a commitment to anyone else, but just to myself of like, okay, I'm gonna do these streams on these days. I'm going to uh, you know, post VODs to YouTube. I want it done this certain way. And then from that, that then drives me to work on this project to make it less of a hassle to do the, kind of the, the editing and the, of administrative 
uh, side of things behind the scenes. Um, and it's, you know, I'm learning more about Rust and, uh, you know, just, uh, it is a project to work on. But that, uh, that, that keeps me motivated. Uh, so as long as I am motivated to keep streaming and keep posting on YouTube, it's engaging as well. I'm glad. I'm glad. Um, so last stream, though, last coding stream last Sunday, I had uh, started rewriting uh, the YouTube stuff to try to use the OAuth 2 crate rather than my uh, hand-coded implementation of OAuth 2 that I've implemented twice, once for Twitch, once for YouTube. Uh, and so I guess I should probably start with fixing all the errors that I left from last time. So what's the problem here? Ah, right. So this is, this is where we left off. So I have an HTTP client. This is a, um, a client built from let's request client. I, I ca I'm calling request client builder. And I'm building uh, an HTTP client essentially. And then from there, I'm trying to pass that into uh, the, let's, let's rename this. It's gonna be clearer if I rename this to maybe something like OAuth uh, to, ah, to client, there we go. I'm not gonna fix any errors, but at least, <laughs> Uh, it reads a little bit better. So, uh, request async is what I was trying to use. Let's see, what are the methods that are available at this point? Bootstrap, SQL, look at this is all diesel stuff. Add extra param, set PKC key verifier, set redirect URI into request, request async. So there's a request and a request async. And I think the intent of these, right, is to pass in um, a request client. Is it, is it happy with this? No. Okay, expected fn once, OAuth2 HTTP request closure found request client. Trait fn once, OAuth2 request client is not implemented. What is fn once? Version of the call operator that takes a by value receiver. Instances of fn once can be called, but might, be, might not be called multiple times. Because of this, if the only thing known about a type is that, that it implements fn once, it can only be called once. So it is, I assume this is just plain Rust. Sorry, I've never been in the Rust world. Yeah, yeah, so this is, this is Rust. <laughs> uh, so this is um, this this right here. Uh, fn is for function. So I have a uh, externally accessible asynchronous function called post login handler. So this is a um, thing that elsewhere is being hooked into the Axum uh, web framework, I guess you could call it. So it's something that's going to uh, be able to serve HTTP requests and dispatch them out to my handler. Uh, and so this function uh, takes this state that is being set up elsewhere in the app and then the request body, which is an auth code uh, struct, which is deserialized from JSON, it's that. And um, so I'm taking an incoming request from my front end and it is uh, doing some things. Specifically, we're trying to do OAuth 2 using this external library. Uh, that framework is like Axios. Um, is hmm. trying to think because I've actually used Axios, but not heavily. <laughs> uh, isn't 
Isn't Axios a client though? Or is there a service side to it? I think I've only used it in the in the context of like for Am I thinking about the same thing? Oh, where's my Not, not the breaking news. <laughs> this, this one, this NPM. Uh, Promise-based HTTP client for browser and node. Yeah, okay. Um, so the 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 equivalent of so I'm using uh, Axum, which sounds kind of like Axios, doesn't it? Um, so over in main.rs, I have all of the route definitions, right? So, um, I have it kind of buried, but this is basically uh, routing. Yeah. <laughs> routing different uh, paths to different handlers. Um, so this would be more like, uh, in the JavaScript world, this would be more like uh, Express.js, right? So in this particular instance, though, what I'm trying to do, actually, you know, what's kind of like Axios, uh, yeah, uh, what, what's kind of like a uh, Axios actually is the crate, which is what in, in the, in the rust ecosystem, um, third party packages are called crates. There's a, uh, um, uh, crates that site called crates.io. Yeah, I can remember things. So this is like uh, the equivalent of uh, NPM for Rust. And so one of the crates that I'm using is called uh, request, spelt slightly differently with the W. Uh, and so over here, I'm, I'm building a custom HTTP client with request R-E-Q-W-E-S-T. And uh, I'm setting user agent, setting how it doesn't do redirects, uh, logging and that sort of thing. And so the idea being that uh, I want to tell the OAuth 2 client that it can use this HTTP client, but I'm, I'm passing the wrong thing here. Um, I wonder if I can pass a, let me look at the implementation request. So it takes the HTTP client and it passes a single parameter, which is the result of this prepare request. Okay. So I wonder if maybe I can just HTTP request, make it closure. then all state HTTP client. Okay, let's wait for cargo Clippy. Wait for Clippy, no, Clippy doesn't like it. So it expects a request found an HTTP request. So uh, our method from uh, request the W doesn't like this type. Okay, so Ooh, can we do? Can we do it uh, into? See if there's some limitation there. Uh, these bots. Go away. Okay, there's not a, an implementation of into or from between these types. And because both types are external to my application, I cannot simply implement from or into to convert between them. Um, 
probably... Notion of execute here. It's a request. A request can be built manually with request new or obtain. You should prefer to use the request builder and request builder to send. Try doing that. Quest. At this point, I would have copied the whole thing and pasted it in GPT. <laughs> I should stop doing that. I mean, to be fair, I'm happy doing that because I'm I'm doing a little bit, and then I'm using I have GitHub Copilot. Uh, that is then what is auto -suge auto suggesting things, um, like that. But uh, you know, I can at least from here um, kind of think about each step <laughs> and is this the right direction or not. So like requests I can see here takes a method in a URL. Well, how do I get a method? I can do HTTP request. I should really focus on uh, uh, method. focus on keeping my hands at the home row and the keyboard. I've had this keyboard for uh, like nine months now. I should uh, focus on getting better at it. Anyway, so uh, this is complaining because what we're returning here is um, it's unhappy with. So specifically this closure needs to return uh, a result. I don't think it's gonna be happy with that either because it's not an async closure. I think we probably do, do need to do request async here. Maybe at this point we can get rid of that. Oh, that was too much. <laughs> get rid of that line. Let's see what Clippy thinks of this. Uh, still not happy. Request builder is not a future. Right. We have not actually sent the request here. We've just built it. You've seen people going crazy with this keyboard in Vim. Yeah. If. I don't know, it's hard to get back into Vim. Again, I tried it a little bit. Uh, NeoVim, maybe that was back in December before I got this keyboard. Um, and it's just, there's so much I like in VS Code that um, yeah, I, I don't know that I could. <laughs> um, give up. Ascend, is there a build? Is there a build? I don't think that's right. Build a request which can be expected, modified, and execute. Okay, so we want to execute. It's not the right execute. Uh, what's the problem here? Result request error is not a future. Yeah. Uh, I installed, but realized there's a million steps to get. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And what's worse is I feel like um, you could, it, it's something that takes time. And then if you want to do multiple programming languages, multiple you know kinds of things, then there's a lot of tuning you have to reproduce. Um, I guess given the fact that I've been working on this project for like nine months now, um, and it's just, you know, well, actually, we did do a little bit of uh, um, Elixir, um, which at some point I'll probably get back to. Uh, but mostly this, this project has been Rust for the back end and TypeScript for the front end. And so 
I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know if uh, I would have considered it worth it to spend the time to get all that stuff set up in. in. So, anyway. So if we call build here, build returns a result for request. Can I, can I just call execute directly on this? What is body return? Body returns request builder. Okay, let, let's take a look at request builder. So, search for request builder, refer to the client documentation. There's nothing until you send it. And we call dot send. What does that return? Send returns future with a response and an error. Okay. And this is still not happy because the types here are incompatible. I suspect that I'm fighting the inertia of what the the author of the OAuth 2 client, the OAuth 2 uh, crate intended. But their examples do show, actually that, that might be a good idea. Let's go over to uh, the OAuth 2 crate docs. Uh, let's see, examples, asynchronous API, client, challenge, client authorize, URL, request async, async HTTP client. So we'll have to request async HTTP client. Maybe that's what I should be doing, but I would really like to reuse my own Client that I've constructed. Maybe that's a good avenue, though. If I can look at the definition for that. Uh, let's see. So we're in SRC lib. So we're in request. Sync HTTP client. thinking maybe there was something in here that would allow me to get, take a normal request client and convert it. And it seems like that's not a thing. It's using its own. Client is this. Uh, which we would already have. Request builder, request builder client, request, all of this, body, and then based on the request builder, uh, we add headers. That's something I was not doing. Uh, and then we call client, execute, map error, and then we read the body, and we return a response. blocking if I look at the async one it should be basically the same thing just using the um, synchronous version of things okay so I guess I 
in the interest of getting this done, let's just use, let's, uh, let's import, actually, you know what I'll do? I'm gonna do, uh, yeah, that, exactly. <laughs> I'm just gonna do that. And I use the, this function that creates a client and does the request rather than making my own that will use the existing client I have because I would like to move on. Uh, this error is just because the function's not, it's not done yet. Uh, okay. So Ugh, there's a lot of, a lot of nothing. Uh, okay. Oh, that's two client. Then we, um, Right, 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 okay. So this is the second step, right? So the first step happens above this. The front end calls get login handler, uh, which returns the authorized URL and some state. Um, that allows the front end to redirect the user to that URL for them to authorize. When the user is redirected back to our front end, the, the front end application then posts back um, the code that it got back from the redirect and it posts back the state that it got back from the, the first request, which is all inside a body. I've done this right. Yeah. So code state PKC code verifier. These are code that it got back from YouTube slash Google and the state and PKC code verifier are what it got from the first request so that it's, this all ties together. So in, in this part of the code where, we, where we've been working on this, um, we are getting our OAuth client. We are exchanging the code, providing this PKCE ver, uh, verifier. We are telling it how to make the request and then we are waiting for it to do it. And so it's gonna verify that the it's going to work with Google to verify the code is the code that was returned. And so that we are proving the front end and the back end. And yeah, basically the, the whole point of this is to make it so that our front end application and our back end application can prove to Google that this application is the one that is registered with uh, the Google API, the YouTube API, um, and that the user that is trying to authenticate to it has a valid like Google YouTube account, right? Um, and they, those are tied together in this, uh, so that we can upload to YouTube, uh, which is what I had already implemented, uh, except now we're using this, uh, this crate, this OAuth 2 crate. So we get a token response. And so the token response should contain an access token. And when it expires, a refresh token, the scopes, and any extra fields. Um, so we're after the access token, a refresh token, and we're gonna be storing those. And we store those in Redis, right? So we get a connection to Redis. Um, this I'm gonna fix. Um, this is a leftover from what I had expected scattered everywhere. We don't want our application to crash. Excuse me. Uh, we don't want our application to crash when um, that connection setup fails. We want to return a 500 error. So uh, that's how you do that. And there we go. All right. So we look at the result of getting the connection. So we asynchronously uh, await the connection. And if it is in the shape of this uh, OK enum, then the thing inside of OK is the connection. And so we return that. If the shape is uh, this enum, uh, or sorry, the, the error <laughs> uh, arm of this, then we trace an error probably should uh, 
gotta, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, let's also make sure to capture what the error was. That will be helpful for troubleshooting, uh, in which case we want to actually have the, a name there for what the error was. And then if we return from this match, this really confused me as I was getting back into Rust again, but this return will return from the whole function, the post uh, log inhaler. Um, so we can return a 500 error. Uh, and then, well, we don't have a refresh token. What we have is we have a this. Uh, I think what I will do is let's change this, this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pluck out the access token. Uh, not like that. Let access token. Token. I don't believe this will be valid. Let's see, what does token response have? It does have an access token, but it is, um, does it? What's the type of that? Oh, okay, they have an access token type. Okay, cool. So does it have, what? Okay, can return a secret. That is that what we want? Can we look at the definition of this? What is an access token? Okay, so it's wrapped in some kind of macro here. Uh, presumably that's why we need to call that secret on it. Is that valid? That gets us back a string. What do we actually need here? It can be a string. Okay. So then we do the same thing. Uh, yeah, there, there's Copilot going again. Uh, is this not? Oh, does refresh token? It, it's an option. It's optional. Okay. Uh, can we just do like map then? There we go. Now we have an option of a string. So then what we want to do is that if we only want to try to set the refresh token if we have the refresh token. Uh, so, what is it? If let some refresh token. There you go. And this, what Copilot just added here, should be identical to what we already had. So, let's get rid of that. All right, and no more errors. Uh, I'm still not happy with that. Oh, one more error. <laughs> Handlers, YouTube, auth code doesn't implement debug. Yeah, okay. We'll fix that in a second. Um, what I want to do here is I want to match on this so that we can handle the error. Might be actually kind of uh, surprising about this construct, this if let, is that this looks like something where you do this. Um, I'm pretty sure, yeah. So I'm pretty sure that like if we look at um, let x equals refresh token. So refresh token here is still referring to the refresh token set here, right? What's defined inside of the let here is only visible uh, at inside of the, the, the if. And that makes sense, right? Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to unpack the optional refresh token. And um, we could, th th there is, I could see both sides of why you might say, <laughs> why would you call this the same thing as this? Isn't that confusing? Um, but at least in this circumstance, I have no intention of referring to refresh token beyond this anyway. Um, and I think it it seems to me, not that I've read a ton of Rust, but 
what I have read and what I have done, it seems idiomatic to do this kind of shadowing, um, redefining variables um, in a function like this. And then I think this is uh, just complaining because it needs to be called, we need to call into response to get a general, um, a thing that implements into response. Or a, uh, um, to, to get a response, there we go. All right, so if you look at into response, it is a method implemented for the into response trait, and it is a function that returns a response. And the reason for that is we, we have different shapes of things that we're returning. Um, sort of, I guess technically speaking, we're always returning the single value tuple with the status code, I think in every single circumstance. So if we got rid of every place where we were calling into response and we just returned this shape, then uh, we wouldn't need to call into response here. Um, and that would work out. But this is kind of the way that you can, like you can have some cases where you just return a 500 error, some cases where you return a 200 and a response body, where you set headers, uh, those sorts of things. And those are all different types, right? Uh, of things we can return in our handler and calling it just, we return something that implements into response allows us to return those different types as one thing without a lot of extra um, like wrapping, just call into response on one of the compatible types. So if I save this, is it happy yet? Let's wait for Clippy to finish. All right, so auth code doesn't implement format debug. Uh, so we have this body contains authorization code, a CSRF token. Um, I think these are things that are, let's see, what is authorization code? Oh, it has a secret in it. Okay, okay. So we should be very safe to like uh, derive the debug trait here. And deserialize too makes sense given that we're deserializing it. Um, so that should be good, ish. We have some warnings that are long-standing things. Handlers, YouTube OAuth or auth code is private. Uh, internet hates you today, oh no. Internet troubles. Uh, I guess this has to be public. And it looked for a minute like it was complaining about state. Yeah, that's not being used. Um, state contains our CSRF token. I might have to go back to look at the example. So we're probably supposed to be calling something that is validating the CSRF token. Ravonna says, yeah, it took so long to fix. Uh, got a... Maybe get an extender. Oh, you're the, yeah. It helps if I just read the whole sentence first rather than trying to parse. Uh, <laughs> you're at the edge of the range of your Wi-Fi. got it. Yeah, um, the house that I'm in is, is big enough that when we moved in, definitely needed an extender uh, to cover all the rooms. Uh, but what I ended up doing like for my, for my office and a couple other places is just ran um, uh, Cat6. Got a big spool of it. Ended up putting a, a made a little mini uh, surfer closet sort of setup out of the out of the closet. Got um, a little like um, I think it's like a four U or six U uh, rack that I mounted on the wall, and I got like a switch on there, and uh, got my UPS, and eventually I'll put a server. On Right now, my, my LAN server is just an old laptop <laughs> running uh, Debian. 
Uh, okay, so what are we supposed to be doing with the CSRF token? Uh, exchange code. Did this example have, yeah, CSRF token. Okay, so we eat URL, add scope, thing. What do we do with the CSRF token? Go to their uh, GitHub. I think there's some actual, like, full examples implemented, if I remember right. So if you look at Google, the RS, basically what we're doing. Uh, let's see, basic client, yada yada yada, set verification. Here they built a request client blocking so this is what I went off of but it doesn't I think maybe this is out of date uh, okay so here's where you get scroll the way I want CRSF state from the initial setup send the user to the location then at some point here we are trying to Read the code and the state. This is where we're reading back the CSRF token from the request that comes back. And then we will log it. So the exchange code. So did they not actually do anything with state? And they return it, right? Code and state here, and then it's logged. Okay, so we don't, we should be comparing these things. Um, state that secret CSRF states that secret. Hmm. So I think I made this comment last week that probably, I don't know. I'm not sure of the utility <laughs> of returning all, you know, all of these things to the front end and having it do the thing. And then you know, the front end gets called back and then uh, the front end makes the second request the post. Probably what really needs to happen is these, the um, these values need to be stored internally in the back end and retrieved, rather than relying on the front end to pass them back. Because what are we going to do? We're going to have state, and we'll also have CSRF state, right? And then we're just relying on the front end to pass both of these back verify them. I'm going to do that right now just so they can have the bit where we're verifying it. Uh, there you go. Let's add a comment. Let's let's have <laughs> Copilot add comments, huh? forward to the day when people say why even leave a comment you just have you'll just have uh, <laughs> AI generate comments uh, embed you know alongside explaining what's going on uh, anyway all right and now, now we no longer use this function so this is what we've replaced right so here is here, here was the code that uh, copilot and I wrote <laughs> Um, back four months ago to do the token exchange stuff, right? To uh, post, do all that. So this is now dead code. 
the whole point. Um, fresh token. So there's still more that we need to update here. So we have updated post login handler. And we have updated get login handler. So these are the parts that the front end calls when it's explicitly trying to um, authenticate. But um, what else do we need to do? What is what is um, update refresh token do? So we call that inside of our. Um, access token so the thing that I'll uh, what's it called an extractor an axum extractor right so this is the thing that we can use so that down in uh, upload start task handler we can expect an access token and that is uh, sorted out for us by that extractor right so in the in the handler we can just say oh we get an access token and what we and here and all the places. And this is what is responsible for getting that, uh, where we read from Redis and then we get the access token and then we attempt to return that access token unless it's not there, in which case we call update refresh token. Now, I think one thing I could potentially do here to uh, make this better, where we store, yeah, uh, you know what's really helpful for <laughs> navigating around the outliner? Um, where we store the where we're storing the uh, access token, it would be good to set a time to live for that. Can we do that by calling set? How does this work? Uh, it does take options. Uh, what does options look like? Set options. With expiration. Uh, let's see. Set options with set commands. Set options default. Set options default dot that is the Windows key <laughs> with expiration. Uh, that is a lot of logic. So you just try to try to embed there. <laughs> We're not gonna keep that like that. Um let's do this. So we're going to let access token duration okay so we have an option duration uh, so what does expire sense say recommended the lifetime in seconds of the access token for example the value 3600 denotes the access token will expire in one hour from the time the response was generated we do here we want to do like or or else is it or or it's or else what does or do returns the option if the value contains a value if, if it contains a value otherwise returns opt to be so we do something like that so we'll just assume that this is good for an hour if it's 
if we don't get anything. I'm assuming that uh, we do get a duration. The other thing I could do is I could check uh, and log, and then we would know for sure. Uh, Bonus says, I wonder if I can build my project's API with Rust. They think it will keep me, uh, keep me being locked in, keep you from being locked in. I think that for example if you if you're building something where you are building the front end and the back end it can be very powerful to use the same language for both uh, i do know there's some stuff out there for building front end stuff with rust as well uh, and compiling uh, to either javascript or WebAssembly. Um, there's a uh, what the project i was working on stream before this one uh, Daily Jewel, which is like a calorie tracking uh, web app, I implemented with TypeScript front end and back end. And there was, you know, some possibility. I think there was a little bit of code reuse. But it's, if, if it's something you're working on, there you can get some value in just having the same front end and back end and reusing things. And that works until it doesn't. <laughs> That's exactly my project, what are the odds? Are you working on a calorie counting app, a calorie tracking app? Um, I don't, yeah, I, I, I didn't make the uh, source code for Daily Jewel public. I, I was thinking about actually, <laughs> it is live. Um, let's see, is it Daily Jewel? How do you spell Jewel? Like the measurement of energy. L-U-L-E dot com? Uh, daily jewel that's something like charts and stuff yeah <laughs> uh, I forget what what did I uh... I have no SEO obviously uh, but it's locked down so only like selected people can register for it um, is it not daily I forget anyway uh, like, let's go back up. Yeah. I get up. Yeah, it's spelled the right way. Um, this is a private repository. <laughs> I, I've not decided to make it public, but, uh, yeah, I don't remember. I haven't worked on it since October. I do need to get back to it again. I also need to get back to tracking calories again. Uh, there's not a lot of charts. It's more of a um, kind of like uh, my fitness pal where you can look up food items and then save them to your daily diary. And you get a, you know, how many calories have I eaten today? What is my target? That sort of thing. Um, how can I see the builds? On actions. This is a tangent. Oh, nice! My renewing Let's Encrypt certificates is working. Yeah, yeah. I I did not get too far into like reports and stuff. Um, that is something that you know, having the data I could definitely do, but I had not gotten around to it. Uh, here we go. Nope. Those logs are long gone. <laughs> Uh, so at some point I'll circle back to that again, probably probably once I get a little bit more willpower to go back to tracking my my, my daily intake. Um, but in the meantime, this. So I'm, I'm hmm. I think what I want to do here is oops, let's undo this. We're not going to do this this way. What we're going to do is we're going to say, um, can we do it if not let? That, that that's not a thing, is it? No, that would make sense, right? <laughs> uh, if 
access token token duration. Hmm. Oh, 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 here, here's how you do this. If let none, can we do this? <laughs> is that valid? In order the errors down here, is this, is this okay? Um, okay, this is not gonna do what I want anyway. What we really actually need to do is uh, match. There we go. So if we have a duration, then we grab just the duration. If we don't have it, I want to trace um, debug. Um, and then I just want to return a duration. Just like uh, STD time duration, we'll just do a default there. Now we have an access token duration that is not optional. It's always a duration of some kind, but we're also tracing, we're logging that we didn't get one. In, uh, Google log. There we go. That's a better log line. Uh, and then I want to, I want to. Uh, oops. Let uh, set options equals ready to set options default with expiration. Why? Oh, looks like we hit an ad. <laughs> I'll be back in just a couple minutes. <laughs> 